learn to fight. Yo, John Fitch here. I got another episode of Learn to Fight for you, and we're going to do a little more uh, education on violence today. We are back in the garage with one of my students, and we're working on uh, forcing a clinch. We're in a situation where he's in a corner, his back's against the wall. He cannot retreat. There's no retreat, no retreat, no surrender. He has to step into the fray and put hands on me. It is in my opinion that you are better off forcing clinch, working to dominate the other person than you are hitting him. A lot of people will argue with me about that, but I'm sorry, you're wrong. You're just flat out wrong with all the experts and people that I've worked with in the numerous years that I have been involved in violence, you're wrong. First off, uh, you have a legal aspect to take into consideration. If I'm walking up on you heated using words and I get into your space and you hit me, that's not exactly legally justified. I didn't really do anything illegal. I, I didn't throw anything at you. I didn't hit you with anything. I didn't spit on you. I'm just raising my voice or I'm aggressively walking towards you. So if you hit me, you're probably, there's a good chance that you're the one that's gonna get in trouble. And yeah, I understand the argument of it's better to be uh, tried by 12 than carried by six. I get it. But in this situation, you'll see, you can tell, you know, my hands are, are out when I walk up. I don't have a weapon and you are responsible for using the appropriate use of force. If you hit somebody, knock them out, they fall, hit their head, they die. Or if uh, you just cause severe bleeding and damage to them, like you're probably getting sued and, and you're probably getting charged with something. And I believe that uh, you can easily, peacefully resolve the situation without escalating to too much uh, force, preventing you from legal uh, ramifications and, and, you know, getting sued, hurting yourself, killing somebody, breaking your hand. A lot of bad things can happen. There are situations where, yes, you're definitely going to have to strike and it's something that you should learn, yes, but you have to know when to use it. And in this situation, you'll see kind of what I'm doing. Uh, we're kind of pretending that maybe I'm walking up to him in the grocery store, uh, on the plane, in the parking lot, you know, somewhere where it's close, confined, close quarters, and he's got to make something happen. Otherwise, uh, bad things could happen to him. I don't suggest at all that you just sit around and wait to find out. Wait to see if he's going to hit you. If he steps within an arm's reach and a step, he's, he's too close. Put hands on him. Put hands on him. Neutralize him. Uh, right here, all we're going to do is he's going to work to uh, the back from, from whatever position he gets into with the clinch. And he's going to use a, uh, uh, a mat return that's very non-athletic it doesn't use a lot of energy he's going to keep his his body lock control of me and he's going to use his knee to to grate down the th my thigh right he's going to grate his knee into the nerve tissue in my thigh and he's going to sag and be heavy and it's going to bring me down to my knees it's a very very uh technical easy way to get somebody to the ground uh and in this situation we want to get the guy to the ground not not every time you want to sometimes you want to push him into the wall uh, hit him in the wall. You may want to put him into the ground and then and get up and run away from him real fast. That's fine too. Uh, we're not going to worry about what to do once we get to the ground. We're just focusing on this little specific technique. I got a couple little videos to show you. He does the first one here pretty well. And then I'm going to show you another one where he kind of makes a mistake and we have to correct it. Okay. So let's get into this and you can kind of see what we're doing, right? Once I get to a certain point, there's no more backing up. There's no more hesitations. He just has to pull the trigger and force the clinch. Okay, right? let's check this out and see what happens. Problem, punch. Huh? Swing, he moves in, he forces clinch, gets that little duck under position. Pretty good. Okay, so we'll watch this one more time. I mean, I'll stop it here a couple times to point some things out. I, I get close. Huh? I'm already I'm already too close. I stepped in close. I'm I'm taking a punch. If he waits with his hands down or he takes a step back, there's a good chance that that punch lands. We don't we don't want that to happen. We don't want that to happen. He covers his head, he protects his dome to make sure that if I do hit him, it's not gonna do much damage. And he closes the distance. Closing the distance smothers those strikes and makes them much less effective. Then he gets hands on me, right? Then he gets hands on me, he begins to work to get to a dominant position, the back. Right there, he's got the underhook right to the back. Pretty, pretty smooth, pretty smooth transition for him, especially the guy's trying to throw wild, elbows come up, it gets a lot easier to make that transition. 
He gets to the back, he locks his hands. Now he's gonna attempt to take his left knee and drive it into my left thigh. It doesn't feel good. You got a lot of nerve bundles in there. He's also going to be heavy on that leg, making it hard for me to step with that leg and, and eventually tripping me. It's a very low energy expenditure on his part. There's the knee, you can see the knee and the thigh right in here. He's being heavy. You know, I'm, I'm 220, 225 in this video. He's 175, 180 pounds in this video and he's able to put enough force and pressure uh, and wait on me to get me to the ground. Boom, we're on the ground. So you see there, pretty effective. Uh, I got too close, I was getting in his face, I was making threatening gestures. Uh, I crossed that barrier of safety for him, that, that arm's length and a step. I started to throw a punch. He had already started moving in though. He didn't wait for the punch to come. He, he saw that I had passed that barrier, that boundary of his, that I was too close, but hands on. I went hands on, and then I continued trying to throw punches, trying to move, and he used that underhook to throw me by, get to the back. Now he's got the back, he's able to start to look to put me to the ground. In some instances, he may not have to take me to the ground at all. It may be enough to get that back control, put him in the wall, talk him down. You can de-escalate from there, maybe hold him there until police or security or somebody comes. I know everybody wants to be John Wick and everybody wants to be the movie star and suplex the guy and punt him because you don't, you don't aggressively move towards me, I'll kill you. Or, you know, oh, I'll just shoot him. Yeah, okay. If somebody's that close to you and you don't have your gun in your hand already, you're telling me you're gonna, you're gonna pull it? It takes me one step to put hands on you and hit you. You're gonna be able to pull your gun in that fast of a time? I, I think that's pretty unlikely. You're gonna have to hand fight, create space, move away and then you're gonna be able to draw your weapon. I haven't seen, I've have never seen somebody from that distance be able to access their weapon and, and get a round off. It's just too close. You're too close, it's too fast. You're gonna have a hard time doing that. So you're gonna to have to learn some level of hand fighting if, if uh, things go this way, you know? Like things can happen. People pop up on you. You're not always 100% in the moment. If somebody gets within a, <laughs> this distance, you're gonna have a hard time accessing your weapon. You're gonna have a hard time accessing your knife. You're gonna have a hard time accessing your, your pepper spray, your gel, your gel spray. You gotta know a little bit of something. You gotta be able to take control of this situation, take control of the distance, and use that to either put them on the ground, put them in the wall, or create space and get away, and then access your force amplifiers. Let's check out another one. He kinda makes a mistake here. He makes a little bit of a mistake and I correct him. I'm, I'm pointing at him. I'm trying to point and push and, and touch his chest. I'm trying to do one of those into his chest. It's not a, it's not a too uncommon of a thing to, to poke somebody in the chest. He makes the mistake by trying to like grab or knock the hand away. That's too uh, specific of a target because you can, you can miss a little target like that. We want broad, we don't wanna miss, we don't wanna make a mistake. We want a shotgun effect, we don't want a sniper because it's too easy to miss with the sniper. We want the shotgun, we wanna make sure we hit it. So uh, I'll, I'll, you'll see him do it wrong, I'll stop him and then we'll, I'll correct him and then you'll see him do it the right way. We want the second, the guy's too close, hands come up, guard comes up, uh, you protect your dome, you force a clinch, and then you go to work. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing, he's gonna work to the back, he's gonna work to put me on the ground. Let's, uh, let's watch. All right, you see right there, I went to poke him in the chest and he, he did one of these. I, I don't like minimizing and just going for that one target, trying to grab that one thing because you can miss, guys can fake. Who knows, we don't know the level of ability of that guy. I can go to poke you in the chest and I see your hands move, I can come over the top and hit you. Or I go to poke you in the chest and you go to grab my hands and I hit you with my other hand. We don't wanna open ourselves up. When we reach out, our defense gets, gets linear and small, right? You just get around the hands and you can get to the head, you can get to the body. If I, if I keep the forearms out, if I keep that frame up, you have a much larger target to get around, right? It's not impenetrable, but it's a lot harder to get through and around than it is if your arms are out Frankenstein. And you don't believe me, you can, you can see number of fights where guys are inexperienced and they start Frankensteining trying to grab a guy and they get lit up, right? This is a thing that uh, we learn in Muay Thai a lot. Don't Frankenstein, don't reach out, don't be the zombie because uh, guys in Muay Thai can, can clinch. They try to get the plum choke. They try to get clinches. Novice Muay Thai fighters uh, will often reach to grab, right? That's a no-no. We don't teach that. We don't want you to reach to grab. 
reaching is is that Frankensteining that opens you up to get damaged, right? And I'll explain to him why we don't do that. Oh, well, hand fire, remember? <laughs> right? What I should have done so was too. it's sniper versus shotgun. Yeah. You grabbing the hand is sniper. Yeah, 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 you could yeah, miss yeah. with the sniper. You want yeah. the shotgun. We're too yeah. close to the sniper. So if I'm reaching, it's just move forward. Yep. You guys see the difference between him knocking the hands away versus covering and stepping in, right? The, the minimalization of movement, right? It becomes much more efficient. It becomes much, much, much more efficient than, than, than this type of thing. This looks frantic. I'm burning more energy like this and there's more openings for me to get damaged. I wanna, I wanna let's look at that uh, again so you can kind of see the difference of those two. Here's the first one, right, hands moving around. One more time, right here. Much, much less effective, much less effective. All right, and this is much more effective. You see how much easier it is for him just to cover and move forward? Much less of a thought process, much less movement, and from an engineering point of view, I learned this from my dad a long, long time ago. The more moving parts something have, the more chances you have of catastrophic breakdown. Well, there's a lot of moving parts here, I'm trying to grab specific things. This is general. He moves up, moves forward. Pretty simple. We'll watch one more time. Yeah. Right, so if I'm reaching, it's just move forward, yep. It goes, ducks under, gets to the back, two on one control, knee to the thigh, gets me to the ground. Much better, much better that time. You guys see that? You see the difference? It's subtle, but it makes a big difference. And for me, forcing this clinch and dominating in this clinch, it, it gives you more opportunities to decide whether or not you increase the level of force you're using. You know, how hard is this guy fighting back? What threat level is he? Does he have friends around? You have more options to do that. If you just start punching people, I think you're over escalating too quickly. And yes, you you are better off standing trial against 12 than you are being carried by six pallbearers and being dead. I 100% get that notion. But in this day and age, you're gonna have to have some uh, regulators on how much force you're using. You, you beat up the wrong person, even though they were attacking you, there's a good chance that you're the one that's gonna get the the worst end of the legal stick. It's not worth throwing your life away because some idiot <laughs> started yelling at you aggressively because they can't control their emotions. Most times when you're having fights, it's probably not a robbery. It's more or less somebody who's, who's drunk, who, who's having a bad day, going through road rage. This student here specifically is training with me because he travels and goes on trips and goes to events where he's not allowed to bring his gun or his knife. And he doesn't feel comfortable not having something to protect himself. He had no tools. He's like, man, it's like, if I go on this cruise, if I go, if I go to this uh, concert, if I go to these things, I go to this ball game, there are still fights that are happening. People are still getting hurt, but I no longer have my force amplifier. I no longer have my gun. I no longer have my knife. I can't bring my, my pepper gel into the, the baseball game. I can't do it. I don't like not having a tool. I don't like not knowing how to defend myself. Well, he knows how to use those tools. Well, what we're doing in the garage here is giving him tools that he can take anywhere. And if he gets attacked or if he gets into a fight in one of those situations, chances are it's not life or death. It's probably not. And he doesn't really want a felony on his record for not three-piecing somebody and knocking him out on a cruise ship. And he, uh, and, and he, he definitely doesn't, doesn't want a lawsuit. He doesn't need to get sued. He, he works hard for his money. Why, why spend tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees and maybe more in damages if, if he doesn't have to, if you don't have to, it's not, it's not necessary. On top of that, I'll say this too. Some people just suck at striking and it doesn't matter how much you train, you're never going to hit hard enough to be effective. I've seen it. I've seen people in the gym, not professionals, people who are average, regular people. They can learn all the combinations. They can learn how to move the head and all that stuff, but they just do not have what it takes to do damage in those situations. But I've seen those same people learn some grappling and be able to make the fight hard enough to deter other people from continuing the attack. So there you have it. A simple way to deal with somebody getting in your face. I don't let them enter that space. If they are arm's length and one step close to you, that's it. That's the boundary. If they get inside of that, get away. Get away. You can't get away. You can't flee. You can't circle out. 
you're, you're pinned in a corner like my student was here, you've got to force clinch. All the way in or all the way out. You cannot hang out in the middle. If you hang out in the middle, there's a good chance you're gonna get hurt bad. You're gonna get a felony. You're gonna get a civil suit. Bad things happen there. It's just not, it's just not worth, not worth it. Not worth fist fighting out in the, in the public, out in the wild. If you really wanna do that, you really wanna test your mettle, you really wanna show what kind of a man you are, go to a gym, train with professionals, do some sparring, then do some smokers, then try some amateur fights, then maybe go professional. Do that. If you're really a tough guy, you really think you're awesome and tough at fighting and you're such a badass, do that. Go, go do it for real. There's plenty of places where you can find bare knuckle fights, MMA fights, Muay Thai fights. Go for it. <laughs> go for it. Otherwise, live a happy, peaceful life. <laughs> live a happy, peaceful life. Don't mess with people. Don't fight in public. The, the king of the streets is the guy who avoided the most street fights. That's, that's the truth, man. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate you. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. I got more videos coming down the pipe. Go down to the links below in the description. Check out my self-defense courses. Check out my strength and conditioning programs. I got a lot of other stuff on uh, the gum roads for you to check out. Seminars and things coming, coming down the line this summer. Reach out if you guys would like to have me come and teach. I uh, like to travel, will travel for, uh, for food and money and good times. I like sharing the dark arts with people. Uh, my, my love and fascination with violence and, and what works best is, is king. I don't care what's popular. I don't care what the, what's getting the most likes and views. I could show all kinds of fancy spin around upside down techniques and tell you that this is the greatest way to defend yourself, but you're gonna get hurt. I get a lot of money and likes, but I don't care. I wanna actually help people. I'm a purist. I wanna know what is the best technique. And if you can show me something better, I will change my position. I will, I've done it a numerous amount of times before. For instance, I used to be all about position, right? Get to the position, pin, and then work for the submission. Later on, I discovered that momentum was the best thing to do. Maintain momentum and catch people with the submissions in transition. You gotta adapt. You gotta adapt to what works. That's what I do, all right? I'm uh, explaining to you guys the things that I have seen work over and over again, not just in uh, training for professional fighting, but I've had combatives experience. I've trained with police, I've trained with military. I've trained with experts who train those people. I have come to the conclusions I've come to through experience, not just making shit up. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I'll check you later.